feeling small when tears are in your eyes I would rather When you're down and out, when you're on the street, when evening falls so hard, I will comfort you. Those bells are going to go for a couple of minutes, so while they're going, if you've not turned off your mobile telephone, would you mind doing that now, please? Or at least switch it to silent. <coughs> Saves the embarrassment if it goes off and everyone's head turns to you and goes, you are the one.
Well, good afternoon and welcome for those of you here in the chapel and those sharing with us via our YouTube channel. For those of you who have not had the opportunity to meet as yet, my name is Bob Durbin. I'm one of the chaplains here at the War Vets. Certainly my honour and privilege to assist you in the conduct of this service today. And on behalf of Joy's loving family, I guess that's pretty much all of you. Thank you very much for coming today to share in this service of celebration of Joy Moran. You've come together to share your grief, your sorrow, your combined sense of loss of someone so close to each one of you, someone who is loved by each one of you. And friends, as you mourn, you need to understand you're not alone. That's why you've come today as one, so that you not only offer your support to the family, not only offer your support to each other, but also to receive the love and support of those around you. And in this sharing process, we will remember, we will rejoice and we'll certainly celebrate dear Joyce's life. Yes, each one of you is here today because Joy was and always will be part of your lives and you part of hers. As we start, let's commit this time to God. Friends, let's pray. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your presence here and come before your throne today as family and friends of joy. We're here because we love her and miss her dearly, and we want to cherish our memories of her. We want to honour Joy's life and support one another as we grieve her passing, a passing from life here with us to everlasting life with you, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we know that your love for us is everlasting. You alone can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of the morning light, by the power of the Holy Spirit, come to us in our darkness and distress with the light and peace of your presence. Speak to us through your holy word that our faith may be strengthened and our hope sustained. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture for today is the 23rd Psalm. Let me share it with you. It's a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, friends, for centuries, the 23rd Psalm has been one of the most treasured passages in all of Holy Scripture. It's also among the most familiar, so much that even people who say they're not religious or very knowledgeable about Scripture recognise these words. They are among the most comforting, often being quoted in times of trouble or distress, and frequently read when we gather for a funeral service, as we are today. You know, there are many images in this psalm which hold particular meaning. One image comes from the verse, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. It would be so wonderful if God would, would simply promise us that we'd never go through difficult times. But we do go through difficult, terrible times. And for some, it's all of the time. And God constantly warns us of these dangers and difficulties right throughout his holy word. St Peter wrote in his first letter, he said, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. The Bible constantly tells us that there will be difficult times in life, and it voices such a warning. It doesn't say, God's going to keep you from all danger, but rather it describes that there will come times, and they come for all of us, when we feel like we are walking through a dark dangerous valley, that valley of the shadow of death. But what the word of God does make very clear is that as we move through such times, 
God is with us. God is there to comfort us. God is there to sustain us. Yes, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. God's frequently described in the Bible as being like a shepherd who cares for and tends to a flock of sheep. The rod is used by a shepherd to ward off evil and to direct sheep as they walk. The staff with its large crook, you know, the big bit at the top, it serves to support the sheep's body when it crosses a dangerous chasm. Friends, the Lord protects, the Lord guides, the Lord supports us, each one of us. He doesn't send us through the dark valley with a cheery promise to meet us again on the other side. Hey, I'm, I'm waiting for you. Yeah, see you there. Doesn't do that. He goes with us every step of the way. We go through it, but we go through it with him. Another image in the 23rd Psalm I'd like to lift up today is, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Often instead of mercy, we say love. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends, the end of our journey through life here on earth is to be with God forever. In baptism, we are made members of the household of God already and our destiny is made secure through our faith. Sometimes the journey is filled with joy and it is filled with joy and sometimes it's very sad and sometimes it can be lonely. Yet the promise that God has already given us, eternal life with him, this sustains us in our journey and gives substance to our hope. The goodness and mercy that follow us aren't something we achieve for ourselves. They are given to us by the sheer grace of God, that unmerited favour of God. Were it not for God's forgiveness, our sins, our mistakes would quickly disqualify us for eternal life. But with God, there is goodness, there is mercy, there is love, and it's supremely evident in his Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Our life on earth and our life with God forever are the product of his grace alone. Yes, goodness and mercy, goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives, giving us broad latitude to work through our grief and sorrow and forgiveness for our mistakes. Because, friends, it's not God's will that anyone living or dead be separated from him forever. He wants us to be with him. Now, today... And tomorrow, until we rest in his loving, warm embrace. Amen. Family memories. You know, we often talk about memories, but what are they, these memories? Are they reminiscences? Are they recollections? Are they memoirs? Or are they something of someone that we, that you, hold so dear in your own hearts. You all have memories of joy. Memories that will live within you, memories you will share with others, memories that will confirm the gift of love through the love that joy gave to each one of you. And your memories, friends, will be as special and as unique as your personal relationship with joy. If we were to write a book of joy, how many passages, how many chapters do you think there might be? You know there's going to be at least the number of chapters for each one of you here, for those sharing with us via YouTube, and who knows how many others. Many chapters to the book of joy. And yeah, there will be some overlap, but again, each chapter will have its own uniqueness its own specialness, its own relationship which you have shared with joy. So what would the book of joy be like? Garen, Peter, Betty, Milia and Cato are going to come and share some of their special and precious memories with us. Thank you. Let's see how this goes. 
Thank you for coming today. Say farewell to Mum. She'll be thrilled to have you all here to remember her life. <clears throat> Mum was born on the 20th of June 1940 in Southport Hospital, Queensland. The first of five daughters born to George and Joy Caronis, who came, who, sorry, yeah, who moved to Australia from Greece. Her father, George, a watchmaker, and mother, Joy, a seamstress. She was born Stomatica Kula Caronis and spent her first few years in Monto, just north of Brisbane. As a young girl, <coughs> Mum's parents and her moved to Bellingen, a beautiful country town in the New South Wales far north coast. It's a very special place. There must also be something special in the water up there because in no time at all, the little family of Mum and her parents soon grew to seven. Next to be born was Betty, then Helen, then Angela, then Anne. Soon they were to be known as the Greek girls from Bellingen. Mum not too happy with her birth name, Stomatica Kula, and the subsequent teasing from the boys at school, swiftly asked to have her name changed, and so it was decided she would share the same name as her mother, Joy. <clears throat> what a wonderful time it must have been growing up on the far north coast in the 1940s and early 50s. One of my favourite stories, and one as a young boy, I recall asking Mum to tell over and over, was the paddock she used to have to cross to pick lemons for her father, George. <clears throat> the paddock had a wonderful big lemon tree, but was also home to an old angry bull that loved nothing more than chasing little girls that were stealing lemons. You remember that? Uh, Mum would wait until the bull was at the other end of the paddock climb under the wire the fence, then run back out, run out, pick as many lemons as she could before raising the attention of the bull. As soon as the bull saw her, he would charge back at her and back under the fence with the lemons she would go. Mum completed her school certificate in Bellingen and then in 16, uh, sorry, at 16 years old began a career in nursing at Coffs Harbour Hospital. Soon after, her family moved to Sydney and Mum completed her four year study of nursing at Manly Hospital to become a registered nurse. This career in nursing would see her make many lifelong friends, meet her husband-to-be, and find her calling in life. <laughs> Aside from caring for family, caring for others was what she did best. Mum met my father, Peter, New Year's Eve in 1966. It was a nurse's New Year's Eve party at Manly Dam. The word went out of young nurses and beer on tap and the local manly Balgala boys arrived in droves. The two met and married the following year and went on to have two children and remain married for 30 years. <laughs> no, thank you. Mum spent almost 40 years in nursing, running wards in many... Of the, private, of the private hospitals, <clears throat> come on, get together, on the northern beaches, as well as Manly Hospital, Plateau View, Scalabrini and Bayview Nursing Homes. She also worked here at the War Veterans Home. In her retirement, Mum channelled her father's watchmaking skills into her jewellery making. She loved making bead necklaces and bracelets and sold them at local fates and fundraisers. She barely covered the costs of materials, but that didn't matter to her, as her thrill was seeing someone wearing her jewellery and got such a buzz when someone complimented her work. Mum's other passion in retirement was painting. I'm sure Mum's painting here. She attended painting classes once, sometimes twice a week, and she especially loved painting scenery and wildlife. Always keeping busy and social, and she just loved meeting new people and making friends. Several of the nurses looking after Mum here at the War Vets worked with her years ago and they were so thrilled to be reunited with her here. Ironically though, it was to be in a nursing home, a place where Mum spent so many years caring for others. They recalled how caring and efficient and methodical she was in her nursing duties. Mum often referred to Mum, off, sorry, Mum was often referred to here by the staff as Nurse Joy or Sister Joy, and she would love to introduce herself, not as a patient, but as Nurse Joy. 
Family, and especially her four sisters, meant the world to mum, and she would be delighted that you could be here to say your farewells. Our thoughts are also with Annie Helen, who couldn't be here today. Mum's happiest place was anywhere with her four sisters, and yeah, yeah. For us as children and cousins growing up, <clears throat> we absolutely love the family get-togethers, and looking back, seeing the bond and sisterly love that you had was just so special. We all went on. <coughs> excuse me. We all went on and had families of our own, and those strong bonds and love for family have been passed on, passed on to us. So for that, we are grateful. When you heard of Mum's passing, no doubt you started remembering the times and memories you shared with her, whether it was as Joy, Nana, Auntie Joy, Nurse Joy, Sister Joy, or Stomatica. I know these memories are how she would like to be remembered and not by the illness that inevitably took her from us. Any of you who spent any time on the phone with Mum, as I'm sure her sisters will remember, Mum would also always finish a phone call with bye for now. You remember that, don't you? <laughs> so, Mum, we love you. We'll miss you dearly. And bye for now. For the benefit of those that are, are not aware, Joy and I were married for 31 years. But sadly, 24 years ago, Joy and I come to the mutual understanding that our lives were moving in different directions. But we remain good friends. And I was able to come and visit her reasonably regularly here at the nursing home at the War Veterans Home. I've always been of the opinion that our lives are God's gift to us. And what we choose to do with our lives, that can be our gift to God. And Joy's gifting was undoubtedly in the area of her nursing. Joy was an extremely competent and compassionate, caring nurse. There were three main areas where Joy specialised in, from, my, from memory. And those areas were the, her understanding of medication and the distribution of that medication to her patients. It always had to be spot on, never made a mistake. The second was in the area of sterilisation in the hospital and specifically around her patients. That was very important to her. And thirdly, the dressing of wounds that was, that was her specialty. And also I could add a fourth one to it, and that was her compassion and care for her patients. One story comes to mind as far as it, me personally. Joy and I had arranged to go out to this particular function, but Joy was on on a day shift and of being shift work I was able to meet her at the end of her shift. At mid-afternoon came and I'm waiting out the front of the hospital in my car and 15 minutes had gone by and Joy hadn't arrived. So me in my wisdom at the time thought if I go into the hospital and find out her location I'll go and see where she is and remind her of our time schedule. So I went in, found out her location, and then I went to the particular room where Joy was doing her nursing, and took a, I stood, the door was open, and I stood at the door and talked about a picture, paints a thousand words. Joy was there, 
leaning over this patient, who was obviously very seriously ill, administering compassionate nursing care. All of a sudden, our outing has become irrelevant, insignificant. And I just, Joy had a back to me and I just turned and she didn't know I was there and I walked back to the car. Five minutes later, Joy come rushing out, <laughs> apologising for being late. And I said, oh, that's OK, no problem. I think she might have been a bit surprised by my response. <laughs> but that was, that was, that was her. Joy had two great loves in her life. And her great love was for her family. She loved her family. Her father and mother, when her father George left us, passed on, it was mother and the five, her five daughters. And when they used to come together for the many family gatherings, the six of them were inseparable. I used to see them there having wonderful fellowship together. And that's a beautiful thing to have. Wonderful. She loved her family. And of course, she loved her children and myself as well. And I'm deeply grateful for the memories that I share of our marriage together. And of course, her other great love was for her nursing. Joy came home from duty one day and she was so excited, so happy. And I said, what's happened? Joy was offered the position of matron at the hospital. And she was honoured to think that she was asked. But such was her capability as a nurse. She declined the request because it was a full-time position. But that's, that's joy. That's joy as a nurse. That was her great gifting. And I'd like to ex take this opportunity to extend from the Moran family sincere condolences to Joy's four sisters, Betty, Helen, who's not able to be with us today, and Angela and Anne. And of course, the respecting following husbands of Con, Theo and Jim, and responding families. Condolences from, from our family to yours. The last seven years have been very difficult for Joy not because of the, the care she got here was perfect, could, could not fault the, the care here at the War Veterans Home, nursing home was perfect. It was difficult in the sense that she wasn't able to share her fellowship, close personal fellowship that she's used to, was used, so used to doing with her family. Sure, we could come and visit her on regular occasions, but wasn't enough for Joy. So I know it's understandable because it was so close before. And second was, it was very hard for her, was she was not able to do her nursing, her nursing career. And it's rather ironic, as Garen has already mentioned, that the seven years that Joy spent here in the nursing home, Joy served at this very same nursing home as a trained registered nurse. And it's rather ironic that her life ends up here. But Joy's life in this battle is over. And that's why it's so important for each and every one of us to be at peace with our maker. And I would just like to say, in conclusion, the joy that I remember would want us to celebrate her life. And we're able to do that when we share some fellowship together, when we come and have some refreshments.
I look forward to sharing those wonderful memories of a beautiful lady, not just, not just, not just in, in appearance, but in, in her heart, in her nature as well. Thank you and God bless you all. Now that we have lost you, Nana, our world has fallen apart. It feels like I can't carry on with this broken heart. Everything feels different now, but I'm happy you're at peace. Happy you're in heaven now and all your pain will cease. There's no more pain, there's no more fear, so dry away that silent tear. I will not think of you, alone in the cold, no longer are you growing old. You're in that place... You're in that place that's filled with love that we down here called up above. I love you, Nana. Now my s sister Nilly would like to say some words. <laughs> Amelia wrote this, so I'll, I'll do my best to do it justice. <clears throat> I heard stories of how much fun you used to have and how much you cared for your family and your patients as a nurse. I heard stories of how you used to chase my dad with a wooden spoon and once broke it on his bum. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I heard stories of how, you, how close you were to your four sisters and I've seen photos of how beautiful you were. I've seen your paintings and how talented you were. I've heard how much you love mangoes, Elvis Presley and your silver Volvo. <laughs> I've felt your hugs and your kisses and I will never forget the love in your eyes from me. Now when I think of you, I will, it will, I will think of all the good times and giggles we had. They were though they were cut short by your illness. You fought so hard and so long right to the end. I'm so happy I got to say goodbye to you on your last day with us. I will treasure that forever. When I think of you now, it won't be thoughts of your time in a nursing home. It will be thoughts that you are at peace with your parents and you are watching down over me. I've prepared for this day for some time, but nothing makes it easier to accept that you are gone. I hope you are safe. I hope you are now safe and finally at peace. I thank God for the time we had together. I love you, Nana. Well, thank you all. One more to go. <laughs> but, but, no, but you're right. I've, I've just put this back. Unless you want to stand there flying free. No, there you are. This, this is always good to hang on to. Yeah. Okay. I think I got the... I got the worst end of the straw. It's very upsetting. Well, hello, everybody. You all know that I am Joy's sister. Sorry? Joy was the elder sister of the girls... And Joy was born in 1940. Her last seven years were spent here at War Vets. Joy was born in Southport, Queensland. And we, Joy, myself, Helen and Angela, lived in Monto, Queensland, for the first part of our lives before packing up and moving to Bellingen, where Anne was born in 1950. We spent 13 years there going to school and having fun swimming in the Bellingen River. We lived in town. We were known as the city people and the farmers were called cow cockies. Our, farm, our father had a jewellery shop in Bellingen, Dorigo and Barraville. We had a good life even though we didn't... Sorry. We had a good life even though we didn't... Oh, sorry. 
Oh, I know what I was trying to say. We didn't have pull the chain toilets, and we had lots of green frogs, and I couldn't wait to leave the place. I hated it. Joy decided she wanted to be a nurse, so she had to move to Coffs Harbour and do her training. She was a good nurse, going on to become a nursing sister, which is one level above from a nurse. She loved her job. When Joy decided to move to Sydney, I too decided I had had enough of the country life and I wasn't far behind her. Our father realised this and decided it was time to leave Bellingen or we would all become farmers. We moved to Sydney in 1960. We lived in Beverly Hills. Joy continued to be a nurse at the Manly Hospital. We all moved on and married and there are 20 great grandchildren between us. I know, because I spent most of the night trying to work my sums out, and I think you're going to do the same. <laughs> I think it's true. Joy leaves a wonderful son who has been her rock. She couldn't have asked for a better one. We have a lovely big family, and we, are, we stay united. Thank you all for coming, and I too hope you join us for coffee. Joy, thank you for being our sister. We will miss you. Some lovely memories there. And thank you for your poem and thank you for your lovely words too about your grandmother. Well, yeah, we've heard words. Let's put those words into pictures as we have a little bit of a journey through the life of joy.
of angel hair and ice cream castles in the air and feather cannons everywhere but to clouds like me but now they only block the sun They rain and they snow on everyone So many things I would have done But cloud guard me my way I've looked at clouds From both sides now From up and down And still somehow it's cloud illusions I recall I really don't know clouds At all Moons and dunes And fairies wheels the dizzy dancing way that you feel as every fairy tale comes through. I've looked at love that way, but now it's just another show, and you leave them laughing when you. And if you can, don't let me know. Don't give yourself away. I've looked at love from both sides now, from give and take, and still somehow it's love's illusion that I recall. I really don't know love. I really don't know love at all. circus crowds I've looked at life that way Oh, but now old friends they're acting strange and they shake their heads and they tell me that I've changed Well, something's lost but something's gained Well, how was that for a walk down memory lane? I'm sure there are a whole lot of new memories of joy you now have that you, you didn't come through the door with, but you'll go out with. Memories of joy that you'll have in here. Well, friends, let's now give thanks for Joy's life and in doing so, commend her to the love and mercy of God. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for the life of Joy Moran, for all that she was and for all that she still is to each one of us. Joy has touched each one of us here today and many who aren't. We pray for Joy's family, whose sense of loss is so keen because their love is so deep. Loving God, 
when we're unable to understand the things that happen, when we're weighed down by grief and loneliness, may we know that you are upholding us. Give us the assurance of your constant care that we may have the courage to meet the days ahead. And Father of all mercies, giver of all comfort, look graciously, we pray, on those who mourn that, casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus Christ commended his spirit into your hands at his last hour. It is into those same hands we now commend your servant joy. The death may be for her the gate to life and to eternal fellowship with you. So go forth, joy, on your pilgrim journey. In the name of the Father who created you, in the name of Jesus Christ who died and rose for you, in the name of the Holy Spirit who strengthens you, may you have communion with all the saints in life. May you rejoice with the whole company of heaven. May your portion this day be peace and your dwelling place, the heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. Would you join with me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer? Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Well, friends, again, on behalf of Joy's Loving Family, thank you very much for coming today to support them and to support each other as you've celebrated Joy's life. You're all invited to join to the Lone Pine Lookout. Now, that's over in the Gallipoli building across the forecourt. There are two lifts down the other end. Go up to the third floor. That's where you'll be able to enjoy some refreshments, as you've already heard. But I think more importantly, again, as you've heard, you'll be able to share more memories of this wonderful, beautiful lady, Joy. Would you please stand? Friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of you now and all.